You're watching Power Nation. Coming up next, we tear this chassis down and give it a fresh coat of paint. It's almost like we mocked all this up already. Then we give the suspension a lift and we start adding the powertrain back to this 85 square body. Finally, we'll put it back on all fours with some new rubber. This is gonna be one awesome ride. Custom little touch, you know? <laughs> this has gotta be the most iconic design. Good. Sure is. Welcome to Music City Trucks. I'm Mark Christ. We've got a new guy here helping us out at Power Nation, Michael Huxley. You're going to be seeing more of him later on. But for now, I want to focus on the project that we're working on today, and that is our square body Chevy. It's a huge day for us and this project. Our frame right here is going to get painted, and we're going to start final assembly on this build, and I can't wait. Now, our frame, we sent it out to our friends at Blast from the Past in Lebanon, Tennessee. They worked their magic on it. Check it out. Blast from the Past has been around since 1996. They are our go-to when it comes to anything sandblasting and powder coating. So we dropped off our square body chassis and they took it down to bare metal quickly and did an amazing job. We've worked with Vance and his guys for years now. They always go above and beyond what we want or need. There's no job too big, no job too small. Well, special thanks to the guys there at Blast from the Past. They always do an amazing job for us. As you can see, frame looks amazing. Uh, now, typically we will just let them go ahead and powder coat something like this, but being that this build is the way it is, this seemed like the perfect build for us to just paint the chassis ourselves, which is what we're gonna do now. We're actually gonna be applying just a black chassis paint to this thing. Uh, and then on top of that, you can see we've got our mobile environmental solutions booth all set up here. Uh, the reason we're doing that is a couple of reasons. One, Brandon's still in our paint booth spraying some of the components, some of the body panels for the faux guy here. So the booth is tied up and this booth is ideal for that. You just pop it up, use it when you need it. Or, you know, like if you run out of room like we have, or you just need something temporarily, it's the perfect solution. Uh, Michael, as you can see, is back there prepping the frame. I'm getting ready to go mix up some paint to spray on. Before you know it, that frame's gonna be black. You know, the most important part of any paint job is preparation. And other than the blasting, we're using Summit's Wax and Grease Remover. I recommend using gloves because you don't want to get any oils from your skin onto the finished surface. And you want to protect your skin from the mineral spirits that's in the Wax and Grease Remover. Well, for the paint that we're gonna be using to spray our chassis, it's uh, from Summit Racing, it's Summit brand. It's called Chassis Shield. It's a satin black chassis paint. It's actually an epoxy. You mix one to one with a catalyst. Uh, you can spray it on top of a primer or direct to metal like we're gonna be doing here. Of course, you just wanna make sure you get the surface prepped properly, which Michael and I have already done. So we just need to apply two coats and uh, we're gonna have a nice black chassis here. This paint has to be applied in two wet coats with at least 30 minutes of flash time between each coat. It can be brushed on if you prefer, but spraying provides a nicer finish in our opinion. We're using an HVLP or high volume, low pressure gun with a 1.6 millimeter tip. Now we all know that I'm not the paint body guru around here, but this is one of those tasks that I feel comfortable attacking on my own. All right, well, the paint's dry on our chassis now, and we've got it back in here, and it looks fantastic. I uh, really like the way the finish looks, especially after it dried. It's got that nice satin finish, and it's super heavy duty, so it's gonna make this chassis and this build last a really long time. Now, we just need to get it bolted back to the suspension, and uh, we'll be ready to start assembling this truck. Looking good. It's almost like we mocked all this up already. And stop right there. You about ready for this thing over there? Absolutely, bring it on over. You gotta go back just a, oh, six just inches. Just a hair. Come in on this side. Good on this side, yep. Up or down? Go down. There we go. All right, we're in. Let's move on, get the 
chassis up in the air and get that transmission installed. I'll be glad to have this thing installed for the final time, you know? <laughs> that makes two of us. Let's see, I see the dowel on my side. Wiggle it in there. These ARP bolts already lubed up. Mark, this is starting to look really good. Thanks, man. I appreciate your help. They got blasted and painted. Look at that. They look brand Restored new. Stored bolts. Well, thanks for doing the heavy lifting. I think this is the real reason you asked me to come over here. It really is, honestly. All right, down on your side, right there. It's in there. I've got a fuel system to run, brake pads and rotors to upgrade. I'll tell you what, I'll leave this with you. You finish tightening these up and I'll go get everything for the fuel system. All right, have at it. Up next, we take a deeper dive into the fuel system upgrade that will rock on our new 496 Big Block. Well, things are coming along rather nicely with our square body Chevy here. Got the frame all painted up nicely, attached to the axles and leaves. We got the engine transmission transfer case back in for permanently. Uh, it's starting to look like a truck now, which is really refreshing. We've got some things that we need to take care of next. Um, I want to get the accessory drive installed. Got some pads and rotors I want to do to upgrade these Dana 60s. And the next thing is going to be the fuel systems. You can see we've got the uh, fuel tank already installed and the rest of the fuel systems right over here on the table. Now, a lot of times on our projects, and you can probably look back, pretty much everything we've built here at Music City Trucks had a big electric fuel pump, EFI, you know, same old thing. But with this truck, this was our opportunity to go old school, baby. So that's what we're gonna do with everything you see here on the table that we got from Edelbrock. First things first, fuel pump. 600 horsepower capable mechanical fuel pump. Nothing wrong with that, right? Of course, we got all the fittings and the hose to connect the dots that we got from Russell. And then the coup de gras, this is the cherry on top. This is gonna be Edelbrock's brand new VRS 4150 carburetor. This isn't your Pappy Zettelbrock that he had on his Chevelle, I promise you. This thing, they knocked it out of the park. This is an all new carburetor. It's kind of the jack of all trades of carburetor, except it does all of those things really well. Let's talk about some of the features. This four circuit small carburetor is easily tunable with adjustability on the idle circuit, intermediate circuit, and high speed circuit. With two air bleeds on that high speed circuit, one for low RPM and one for high RPM. This carb will help you achieve your engine's maximum horsepower while maintaining drivability. The air fuel curve at wide open throttle is as flat as a pancake. And if you don't feel comfortable tuning, it's ready to go right out of the box. Just drop it on and go. Oh, it even has a built-in provision for a throttle position sensor, which is gonna come in real handy because we're running that 4L80E. This VRS line is gonna be available in several different sizes. Right now, it's only available in 650 and 750 CFM versions. We chose the 750, which is gonna be plenty for our 600 horsepower big block Chevy. It'll actually handle even more than that. Now, we're not gonna be installing that today for obvious reasons. We wanna get the rest of the truck assembled before we do that. I don't wanna damage it, but I just couldn't miss this opportunity to show it off just because I think it's so cool. Uh, for now, I'm gonna get this fuel pump installed and maybe install some fuel lines. All right, well, before we install our new fuel pump, we need to install this uh, fuel pump push rod because, well, engine power, when they built the engine, they had it blocked off. They weren't using mechanical fuel pump, but because we are, we've got to go with this. Uh, we got this from ARP, so it's gonna be super strong and do the job to drive that fuel pump. This is the lube they said to use. We'll get the push rod in place. Then with a little RTV on the gasket, we can install the fuel pump. It gets held in with two bolts. And then we can install the AN fitting. Nice and simple. When it comes to uh, running new fuel systems, it's about as simple as it gets. Uh, we just connect, this is the feed line that goes to the pump from the pickup. And this is a returnless system, so this is the only hose that attaches to that sending unit. Just need to connect it to the pump. 
Well, I know you can't see down in here because it's so tight, but uh, that's the feed line that goes to the pump. Now all we need to do is run the line that comes out of the pump up through the filter to the car, but we're not gonna do that right now because obviously we're not installing the car, but for all intents and purposes, that's pretty much it for our fuel system, thankfully. Oh. This steering box is serviceable even with the accessories in place, but it's a lot easier to access now before we install them. Man, that looks good. Next up is the final fitment for the drag link, which now fits like a glove. This was such a creative solution. All right, well, that solves our problem here with the clearance between the track bar and the leaf spring. Steering's all back together, and now I'm gonna move on and do the accessory drive, and that's next. Coming up, chrome, chrome, and more chrome. We add on our accessory drive components. Well, we're plugging away on final assembly on our square body here, the faux guy. Went ahead and got this electric water pump out of the way. They installed that down in engine power to run it on the dyno. I'm sure they want that back, but we're getting ready to install our accessory drive and we're gonna do that with all of this stuff here that you see on the table. This is one single part number from Billet Specialties. This is their big block Chevy true track setup that's obviously polished. Uh, this kit is a really nice kit. Let's start with the alternator. Uh, you want a good alternator? Power Master is the way to go. 130 amp, of course it's polished to a shine just like everything else in this kit. The AC compressor is a Sandin SD7. Uh, GM style power steering pump, nice and efficient. Uh, actually, the AC compressor comes with this nice little manifold too, and it points down to hide the uh, hoses, so gives you a cleaner look. Uh, the water pumps and Edelbrock aluminum, high flow, the main bracket here, polished billet, just like most of the rest of the pulleys and brackets here, comes with a seven rib belt. And then of course, all the hardware to get it installed, which is all stainless. It even comes with uh, several ARPs here, which I like, matches some of our other hardware on the truck here. The first thing though to be installed, is gonna be these studs right here. A little black RTV on these studs. One nice thing about this kit is the way the water passages are sealed. They use these O-rings, which makes installation nice and easy and prevents leaks. Put a little anti-seize on there. Time for the water pump. Then we can start installing the rest of the accessories one at a time. Another great thing about this kit is that it's compact and doesn't take up a bunch of room in your engine bay. All right, well, that looks really nice. Now I would say it's a little too nice for this truck, but actually it's not because once the rest of this truck gets assembled, this is gonna fit right in because this is gonna be a really, really nice truck. Now. Uh, I do want to address the brake system next, and although I can't do the entire brake system, not without the cab in place, I do want to upgrade the pads and rotors because I want that out of the way. I want to get the wheels and tires on here because I already got the tires mounted and balanced. I got to show you these. Now let's start with talking about the pads and rotors that are on our Dana 60 crate axle. There's absolutely nothing wrong with these. Uh, everything is fresh on these axles, including the brakes, but it's just OEM style pads and rotors. They'll do the job, but we wanna take ours to the next level. And that's what we're gonna use this brake kit right here for. This is the Z36 truck and tow upgrade kit by PowerStop. Comes with pads and rotors. So let's talk about the rotors first. These things are drilled and slotted. Uh, that's gonna help keep the brake surface nice and cool. Uh, the slots will also help remove the gas, degas the pads, that stuff that's created from the braking process, uh, as well as the dust, pull that dust away from there so you have a nice solid bite. And as for the coating, you can see it's a really nice zinc coating that's gonna help protect against rust and corrosion. Now, as far as the pads, uh, this is a Z36 carbon fiber ceramic brake pad. So it's not just ceramic, it's like the next level, they've got carbon fiber in here. It's for severe duty towing and hauling or off-roading. Um, it's a really nice brake pad that's gonna be minimal with the brake dust and still provide a, an amazing uh, stopping performance. The kit also comes with uh, all this hardware here and the lubricant, but we're not gonna need that on this one because everything's still brand new. We just need to tear it down and swap these in. Pretty impressive.
Now I'm removing the wheel speed sensors because these axles come equipped with wheel speed sensors for ABS from the factory. And we're definitely not running ABS on this truck. So instead of just snipping them and getting them out of the way, now's the time I can just unbolt them and remove them nice and clean. Whenever you're doing a brake job, like that rotor likes to kind of lean a little bit on these slip-on style rotors. So when you're doing a brake job, you swap out the rotors, you can just put a lug nut on, even finger tight like that, and that'll hold that rotor straight so you can get the caliper bracket and the pads and the caliper installed nice and easy. All right, that's all there is to it. Again, got to do all the rest of the brake, plumbing and everything, but I'll get to that later on. Next up though, wheels and tires. Next, it's time to reunite this cab with our chassis. Add some wheels and tires and you're speechless. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. This looks amazing. Well, on any build, we all know wheels and tires can either make it or break it. And when you're talking about an old school build, that's especially true. And then take something like this where we're doing a tribute, we have to have the exact right wheel. And that's what we've got right here that we found on Summit Racing. These are eight spoke chrome wagon wheels. I mean, nothing screams 1980s build like these. They are 16 and a half by nine and three quarter with the eight on six and a half lug pattern for our Dana 60s here. To me, it doesn't get any better than this. And then for the tire, had to have a specific size, 36, 13, 50, because that's what uh, they ran on the Fall Guy truck for the majority of the series. So 36, 13, 50, 16 and a half on chrome wagon wheels. I think that's enough said, but let's talk about the tires a little bit more. Uh, these are from Super Swamper. These are called the IROC. So uh, they look a little bit like a regular Super Swamper would. They've kind of got that triple stage lug designed, uh, but with a little bit of a twist. It's a really cool looking tire um, and it fits this build really well. I can't wait to get these on here. Uh, I'm gonna get them bolted on and get, make this thing a roller. I wanna roll it back and really soak it in. All right, well, now this is not ride height because we don't have the weight of the body on here yet, but it's pretty close. Can't wait to see what this looks like when I roll it back. Oh yeah, let's take a look at this. Oh, come on. Yeah. I love that. I love it when a plan comes together. Wait, wrong 80s TV show. Either way. Um, Let's, let's just reflect for a second on where we started and, and where we are now. We started out with a mud caked, completely stock half ton chassis. Although impressive in its day, it definitely was not up to our standards for this build. After stripping it down, we blasted it and gave it a fresh coat of Summit chassis paint. The power plant is where the change really starts to happen. We started with this 305 boat anchor that gave us a whopping 160 horsepower with 235 pound-feet of torque. Then we slammed in this 496 cubic inch big block Chevy that makes an impressive 596 horsepower and 629 pound-feet of torque. Wow! The 700R4 transmission was ahead of its time back in the mid 80s, but it's not up to the task of handling that nearly 600 horsepower. However, thanks to TCI Automotive, we now have a new electronic 4L80E transmission. Then we ditched the half-ton 10 bolts for a pair of one-ton Dana 60 crate axles, a six-inch Skyjacker lift, and some 36-inch Super Swampers on a set of chrome wagon wheels. This is what we started with, and this is what we've got now. Well, now all this thing needs is a body and we've got ourselves a complete truck. And thankfully, while I was busy doing all the greasy stuff, Brandon was busy doing the dusty stuff. And since we started with a really nice truck, we ended up not painting the firewall or the dash, just the outside and the door jams. That way, when we put this truck back together, it looks fairly original. And we ended up going with some undercoating on the bottom side to protect it from rocks and rust. Now that the chassis is done and the cab's done, I say we sandwich these things back together. Let's do it. <coughs> The anticipation, as they say, is killing me. 
Well, now it's time to get our body mounts ready. We went ahead and upgraded to these polyurethane mounts. It's a really nice kit, but it doesn't come with all of the hardware. Uh, you've got to reuse all of the uh, the sleeve and then the washer, of course. So it just replaces the rubber bushing. This is an original one. Uh, you can really see the difference here, how nasty they were. Um, but in order to do that, I've got to press out the sleeve from this rubber. That's the hard part. Let's do that now. There's really not a great way to do this. So just got a pair of channel locks here on the rubber part. And then I'm gonna hit it with the uh, air hammer here. Well, that's the hard part. Once that's done, just blast these and paint them. And then they look like this. So now all we need to do is assemble our mount. Drop it in place. Down comes the body. Wow. Well, what do you think? You're speechless. <laughs> Dude, this truck, the blue and silver. Nothing screams 80s like chrome wagon wheels, baby. Well, I hate to say it, but this is Brandon's last episode on Music City Trucks. We wish him the best on his future endeavors, and maybe we'll see him down the road.